God bless you. God bless you. If you're joining, share the broadcast. Invite a friend. Tell somebody to tell somebody that the prophet of God is online. Write something. Let us know where you're watching us from. Tag a friend. Today I want to teach on hearing the voice of God. Yesterday I taught about <clears throat> Lord opening our eye, the risk of being spiritually blind. Now today I want to teach on hearing the voice of God. What does it take you to hear the voice of God? And why do you need to hear the voice of God? God bless you, Waswa. Share the broadcast, Alex. Prince Samuel, God bless you. Share the broadcast, Samuel. Mpendo, God bless you. Share the broadcast. And everybody that is joining, please write something. Let the prophet know that you're watching. Invite a friend to invite a friend. Let a friend know that the prophet of God is online. We are coming late, but by the grace of God, we are here. Jane Odiambo, God bless you for joining, Pastor. Share the broadcast. I hope everybody that is joining is being blessed. And I believe that this prophetic hour will not leave you the same. Invite a friend, tell a friend, tell a friend that the prophet of God is online. Let somebody know. Share to as many friends, to as many groups as possible. Invite as many friends as possible. Hearing the voice of God. Hearing the voice of God. Hearing the voice of God. I want us to begin. We are reading only one scripture. <clears throat> now, what I prepared in my spirit about hearing the voice of God, we will do a bit of series because today we are doing part one and then we will have part two. Then we will have part three. Then we will have part four. And I believe by the time we are doing part one, part so I'm doing part one today. And today being the last day for this week, because we are doing every Monday to every th Wednesday. So today, Jackie, God bless you. I, I need your number, Jackie. I think I don't have it. I don't know. You will inbox me. Okay. <clears throat> so today we are doing part one of hearing the voice of God. And then from Monday next week, we will continue with part two, part three, and part four. So that is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So next week we will do part two, part three, and part four. And I pray <clears throat> that you be connected and you receive your own portion of blessing. So we have here Maulana. Maulana, God bless you. Jackie Mbala. Jackie, God bless you. Write something. Let me know that you're watching and let's know where you're watching us from. And I pray that everybody share this broadcast. Let somebody be blessed. Purity Charlo, God bless you. God bless you for joining. Let me know who is there. Share the broadcast. Tag a friend. Invite a friend. Holiness, God bless you. Mommy Purity, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. <clears throat> now, in the book of First Samuel, chapter number 3, verse 1, Oh, Sheldon is here. Sheldon, God bless you, my son. Share this broadcast. Sheldon, is your, I think it's your first time on this platform, right? God bless you for joining. Charlene, God bless you. I want us to share this broadcast to as many friends as possible. Invite as many people as possible. Tag as many friends as possible. Tell them that the prophet of God is online. Gladys Nyaboke, God bless you for joining Nyaboke. Eunice Mbo, God bless you. Stacy Bonnie, God bless you. Everybody that is joining, share the broadcast. Tag a friend. Put your hands on the share button and share. Charlene Wright, God bless you. Charlene, I want you to put your hands on that share button. Just put your hands on the share button and share. Just put your hands on the share button right now and share. Just put your hands on that share button and share. So we are reading from the book of 1 Samuel chapter 3 verse 1 through verse 10. And be patient with me because tonight we are going 36,000 feet above sea level. And I want you to tighten your belt because when I put my heart to teach something, I don't go around it. And I don't teach from the point of, <clears throat> of good message. I preach it from the point of revelation and from experiential knowledge. Are we together? So there we go. 
<clears throat> there we go. There we go. God bless everybody joining. Mary, God bless you. Tabo, God bless you. Everybody, I want you to put your hands on the share button and share. Put your hands on the share button and share. Tag a friend. Just tag a friend. Let them join in the name of Jesus. First Samuel chapter 1, chapter 3, verse 1 through verse 10. If you can read this from message version. I'm reading from New, New King James Version. But if you can read the same from the message version. This Friday, I have a good news for you. This Friday is going to be fire. This Friday is going to be prophetic. This Friday is going to be oily. This Friday is going to be forensic, idiosyncratic. This Friday is going to be of its kind. I want you to purpose to attend this Friday prophetic service. And, and, and by the grace of God, you will not regret it. This Friday, Susie, you can't miss it. Everybody here, you can't miss it. Don't say you didn't hear this. So I pray that even as we are, today is our last day for this week. So the next time we are meeting is on Friday, prophetic service. And I pray that everybody be there, be there, be there. Be there by 5 p.m. sharp. It will be very prophetic. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 3 from verse 1, the Bible says, Now the boy Samuel, the word the boy means he was a lad, he was still young. This would mean spiritual immaturity. The word boy here may mean spiritual immaturity, may mean spiritually young, may mean may not necessarily mean that he's matured in, in age or is not mature in age. It means it can mean yes, he's a young man physically by age. It can also mean he was somewhat immature in the things of God. So the word a boy can mean he was not spiritually strong. He was not spiritually understanding. So there we go. Now the boy Samuel. So the word the boy now I've, I've explained in this context means spiritually incapacitated, spiritually young, spiritually infant. Now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. Mark that word. This was, this was no, there was no widespread revelation. And it came to pass at that time, while Eli was lying down in his place, and when his eyes had begun to grow, to grow so dim that they, they could not see, and before the Lamb of God went out in the tabernacle of the Lord where the ark of God was. And while Samuel was lying down, the saw that the Lord called Samuel. And he answered, Here I am. So he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you have called me. Oh, I'm going to reveal something here. I'm going to reveal something tonight. This is going to be mind-boggling. <laughs> this is going to be mind-boggling. Ophelia, you are there. I want to share. Christine, I'm seeing you there. Share the broadcast. Oh, this is deep. This is deep. It is, it is, it is in good spirit that we share. God bless you for those who are sharing in the name of the Lord. Help a brother, help a sister to receive this revelation. And he said, I did not call. Lie down again. And he went and lay down. And verse number six, then the Lord called yet again Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, here I am, for you called me. He answered, I did not call you, my son, lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again for the third time. Mark it now, for the third time. For the third time. The Lord God called him again for the third time. Then Eli perceived, okay, sorry. So he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you have called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord has called this boy. No, if that is your Bible, I want you to underline that statement. And, and the Lord called again for the third time. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the boy. You know, it takes somebody who is spiritually matured to help you hear in the voice of God. And that's why I'm here. It takes somebody who knows how this God has been speaking before to help you to know it is God talking. It takes mentorship. It takes direction. It takes... So there's that place of mentorship. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, it shall be. It shall be. If he calls you, 
that you must say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now when the Lord came for the fourth time, now in chapter 10, going down, he was able now to answer. Now, I want you to pick that part. I want you to pick that number 9 and number 10. That the Lord called Samuel for the first time, the second time, and the third time, he was not able to. Now, when Samuel is coming, I mean, Eli is talking to Samuel, Eli is telling him, when the Lord calls you, answer him like this. Somebody told me, man of God, <clears throat> must you teach people in the school of the prophets? And I said, I must teach people in the school of the prophets because Samuel was taught how to hear and respond by Eli. The reason why we have every mess in the prophetic in this nation and in the world today is because many people are anointed, gifted, but not trained. Many people are anointed, gifted, but not mentored. Many people are anointed, gifted, but they lack direction. So because of lack of this, many people, they have messed. Can I have everybody share this broadcast? Do me a favor. We need to do me a favor. God bless you more. You need to do me a favor. Everybody do me a favor. Put your hands on the, on, on the share button and share. Put your hands on the share button and share. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Pastor, do me a favor. Jane, share the broadcast. This is, this is Christine. Share the broadcast. God bless you. Jane, I see Jane there. God bless you. Share the broadcast. I see, I see Alex Waswa. God bless you, Alex. Share holiness. Let somebody know the prophet is online in Jesus' name. So hearing God is one of the most fundamental things into the body of Christ. And it's a very important thing to a believer. You can't hear God's voice if you don't understand how important the silence of God is. Oh, this one, now we need to hear this. Somebody need to hear this. You can't hear the voice of God if you don't understand how important. Okay, let me put it this way first. You can never, you can never hear the, the, the voice of God if you don't know how important a silent place is. You know, for you to hear God's voice, you need to learn how to, to, you know, to be able to be in a place, quiet place. If you don't understand the, the, the importance of a quiet place, a silent place, a silent place, you can never learn to hear the voice of God. So you must be able to understand how to how the quiet place can be important towards hearing the voice of God. Not every time you must be where there is noise. Sometimes you need a place where there is peace, where everything is quiet. You need to understand the importance of quiet place for you to hear the voice of God. That is one. The other, the contrary, on the other side, you will never understand or appreciate hearing the voice of God until God is silent on you and you are crying to hear his direction. You are crying, God, speak for me, for my situation. God, tell me something about my issues. And God was never talking. Until you know how painful it can be when you are in pain and God is quiet. When you are in problem and God is quiet, until you understand how painful it can be, then you begin to appreciate the place of hearing the voice of God. But if you don't, you've never been into a quiet place, you've never been into a problem, you've never been into a situation where you needed God to direct you. You needed God to speak, God, where I am now, I cannot move, I want your direction. You have been into a place where you are saying, God, if you don't talk now, I may mess up. I don't want to mess again. Please talk. You are, you are in a place, you are saying, God, I'm about to make a bad decision. I'm not sure whether this decision is within your direction, whether this decision is, I don't know God, but I need to hear you. Please talk. If you have never been to a place where you are confused, you don't know what to do, where to go, where to start from, you will never appreciate the voice of God. And that's why I'm teaching people, people hearing the voice of God. And I pray, child of God, don't take this thing for granted. Many people today, they regret. And I say this, and I want to say it again, and I will say it again in capital letters. Many of us, we are regretting today because we were not able to hear the voice of God when we ought to have heard the voice of God. Many of us, we are where we are today. We are victims of hearing the voice of God. 
Many of us today, we are crying because we were not able to hear his voice when we were supposed to have heard his voice. Many of us today, we, we, we have been messed up. We were conned. We, we, were, we, we were scammed. We, we were cheated. We were used. We, we were confused. We went into what we were not supposed to go into because we could not hear the voice of God. Child of God, listen to me and listen good. You need to listen to this word by word. So that after this series I'm starting today, we are ending it next week on Wednesday. You don't go back into a mess again. You don't go back into wrong decision again. You don't, people have left people you are not supposed to have left. And people have brought people into their life, people they were not supposed to bring into their life. People have sent away people they are not supposed to send away. And people have brought close people they were not supposed to bring close. People have rejected what they were not supposed to reject. And people have accepted what they were not supposed to accept. People have cried tears they were not supposed to cry. Why? Because we were not able to hear the voice of God. So we moved by the push of flesh. We moved by emotions. We moved by masses. We moved by what will people say about me. We moved by, by public opinion. And later, we regretted, we cried. And I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice that will take their time to listen to this teaching. That may the Lord open your eye. May the Lord open your ears. That you will never follow this teaching and go back and regret. May you never go back and cry a tear you ought not to have cried. May you not finish this teaching and go back and confuse your life again. I pray in the name of Jesus. Again, no likazela brahadiza. I decree and I declare by the authority of the Holy Spirit that after this teaching, may your inner eye be open and may the hand of the Lord remove the veil of the devil from your face. I pray, a kosher leader, that in the name of Jesus, you will never bring wrong people your way and push good people away. You will never bring evil people closer and push right people far. You will never take wrong things and throw good things. You will never be confused when you make decisions. I pray for you that this topic will open your eye. This series will take you far. This series will give you grace to conquer. This, this will give you grace to correct mistakes and correct things you have done in the evil ways. I pray in the name of Jesus. Or oh, if you're there and you love what I'm teaching, shout a better amen. Now listen to me. I said you cannot hear God until you learn to appreciate quiet place. Sometimes you're in a room, you put down every music, you put down everything, and you're just quiet. You're saying, Lord, talk to me, your servant is listening. And you, you will never know how important hearing the voice of God is, I have said, until you need direction and God is quiet. Not everyone saying they heard the Lord. Not everybody saying that says the Lord. Not everybody who is saying the Lord said, heard from God. Can I take it again? Not everybody who is saying the Lord said, heard from the Lord. I asked people this question last year, and I want you to ask yourself, Eunice Nyongesa, Ophelia, I want you to ask yourself, Miriam, ask yourself, Holiness, ask yourself, um, um, Lizzie, ask yourself, um, um, who is there? I see Eunice Mbogo, ask yourself, I'm seeing Pastor Jane, I'm seeing Alex, I'm seeing Tambo, everybody that is here, and I pray that you share this because you are going to help a friend. Just, just help a friend by sharing. Just help a friend by sharing. When you share, you care for that person. When you tag somebody, you care for them. But I want to ask a question. Many of us, you have been crying to hear the voice of God. Are you ready to obey? Susie, you want to hear God. God, talk to me. But are you ready to obey? Eunice Nyongesa, if God will choose to talk to you now, are you ready to obey? Jane, if God would talk to you now, can you obey? In many cases, we are crying, God, I want you to speak to me. Tell me something about my situation. Tell me something about my situation. And then the Lord, is, maybe say, say, for example, Ophelia is praying about marriage, or Eunice Jongesa is praying about marriage. Let me use an example. 
when somebody you are crying to hear God about marriage, for example, and you are telling God there are these two men, for example, before me, who are you saying that I should marry? And the person that was not priority was not number one as far as you are concerned. If God will say that is the man you are going to marry, a question is, are you ready to obey? If you cannot answer that question, you cannot hear the voice of God. Because God doesn't have time, Jackie, to speak to somebody whom God is aware will never obey. If God can tell from his sovereignty that you are not ready to obey, then you are not ready to hear. So you must be ready to obey so that when God speaks, he knows he's not going to waste energy and time in talking to you. But if God in his sovereignty can tell that Shalin will not obey, God will not talk. Now that's where now, now that's where it is beginning to be tight. Now you see why you have been telling God to talk to you about some issues and God decided not to talk. You see now sometimes why you're saying, God, talk to me. I don't want to do this, Nyaboke. I don't want to do this. Uh, I don't want to do Sometimes God has refused to talk because he is aware that even if I talk, you are not going to obey. So God doesn't want to waste time talking to somebody that he can tell because God can foretell. God can know before that if I tell Mary to do this, she will not do. Many of us are saying, God, I need direction, I need direction, I need direction, I need direction. And maybe God is saying, so God knows if I tell you to go A or B, then God knows your heart is not there. So you keep quiet. But I pray that God also give us grace to grant obedience so that we are ready to receive and we are ready to hear his voice. So ask yourself a question whenever you're praying tambo. Can I obey? Because some few things I want to show you here, and you need to take them down. I've seen you there, Miriam. In the realms of the spirit is not only a voice that speaks. Anything in the realms of the spirit can speak. And I told you, I told you for those who follow what I we post on our Facebook. I said when God wants to teach you a lesson, God can use anything to teach you a lesson. When God wants to speak to you, God can use anything to speak to you. He spoke to a prophet called Balaam through a donkey. He spoke to Saul through a donkey. If God wants to talk to you, he can use this Robert, who is not up to your standard, who is not well educated, who is not old enough, who is not this and that? They, you know, somebody that is not what you thought a man that should talk to you would look like. God can use even your daughter in the house, even your son or your... You know, God can use... it. Listen to me. If you have to hear the voice of God, learn it from today. When God wants to teach you a lesson, he can use your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, your sister, your brother to teach you a lesson. If God wants you to learn, he can teach you through anybody or through anything. That's number one. Number two, if God wants you to hear his voice, he can use anything to talk to you. Even your phone can crash. God, if God in the realms of the spirit, not only a voice speaks, God can speak to you through. Have you ever been praying? And everybody, if you have ever had this encounter, please just comment, I've ever had it. Let me explain something here. And by the grace of God, I'm a prophet, so I'm teaching from experience. Have you ever been in a place you are praying, you are praying, you are praying, 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 you are praying, you are praying, you are busy praying, you are busy praying, you are busy praying, and then something just happened, and something collapsed, bam, bam. And when that thing collapsed, it interferes with your attention. And you looked at it, and you take that book, wherever it was, you put it back where it's supposed to be put, and you continue with your prayer. You never try to design, why could, and if where you had put it before, it should not fall, nothing has pushed it, you did not push it, you are in the room alone, but something just pangla from, have you ever been there before? Maybe you are just quiet, you are not praying, you are not making noise, nothing, and a, a, a cup or something, just something, that was properly placed, just comes from where it was and it falls. Have you ever, have you ever been there before? Do you know those kind of instances, sometimes God is talking to you, so, what I want to teach you tonight when you talk about hearing the voice of God is that when we talk about hearing the voice of God in the realms of the Spirit, putting together what I have said before, everything I've said before with standing, everything I said before with standing, 
You want to hear the voice of God. Jackie, the question you must answer before you hear that voice. Am I ready to obey? Many of us, God speak to me. God speak to me. What is God saying? What is God saying? And then the day the Lord spoke, you felt it was not in agreement with your spirit. And I said before, and I will repeat without fear of contradiction. When God knows you will never obey, God has no business talking. <clears throat> so you will ask God to speak forever. He will never speak because he can tell this one is not going to obey. So the, the discipline is, I'll keep my word because even if I say it, you will not believe it. You will not do it. So you must be readiness to obey prepares you to hear. Naturally, even you, a human being, you have ten children, you have three children, you have two children, you have three brothers, you have two brothers. And you know if I tell brother A, he will fulfill what I said. If I tell brother B, whether I shout, whether I cry, he will never do it. Even you, human, you will never want to waste your time to talk to that person. So in the realms of the spirit, if I go back there, God is not only voice that speaks. So if you are believing God to hear his voice, then you need to learn that it's not only a voice that speaks in the realms of the spirit. Now listen. For you to be able to listen to the voice of God, you need to begin to learn how to invest in the quiet place. You need to learn how to invest in quiet place. I pray that everybody will share this. I pray that everybody will share this broadcast. When, number one, I said for you to hear the voice of God, make sure you are ready to obey. Number two, you must be able to, you must be able to learn that in the realms of the spirit, for those who are writing this down, you need to learn that in the realms of the spirit, not only a voice speaks. And number three, I say it also, that for you to be able to hear the voice of God, you must know that God can use anybody or anything to talk to you. You may be expecting God to use one big prophet from Nigeria to talk, and God will refuse to use that prophet, and God comes and uses Robert here. And since you are not expecting God to talk through Robert, you will despise what Robert is saying, still waiting for God to talk through the Nigerian prophet. I'm using examples. So you need to be able to be flexible. So that when God wants to talk to you, you don't, you, don't, you don't determine for him channels he should use. And number three, for you to hear the voice of God, you must, your heart must be proper. Your heart must be proper. Because some of us, you doubt even if God has been talking. <clears throat> you want God to talk to you, but when God talks to you through somebody else, you doubt. You doubt people that God has spoken to. And you say, ah, Jackie, hearing God, where? For what? So God has been talking to you through Jane or through Jackie or through who? And you've been doubting it. Or oh, somebody just typed it three times prophetically. Lord, open my ears. I want to hear your voice. Open my ears. Oh, Lord, open my ear. Oh, Lord, open my ears. Speak to me, speak to me, Lord. Speak to me. I want as you are typing it three times, let it be intercession. Lord, speak to me. I want to hear your voice. Speak to me. I want to hear your voice. Type it three times prophetically. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Everybody just type it three times prophetically. Lord, I want to hear your voice. Speak to me. Oh Lord, I want to hear your voice. Speak unto me. So your heart must be proper for you to be able to hear him. If God has been talking to you through other people and you've been, you know, undermining that voice, so that will also delay you from hearing his voice. And it's practical for those who have brothers and sisters and children and whatever. If you have two brothers and one, whenever you talk to them, they obey. But there's this one particular one, whether you tell them or what, they will never obey. Anytime you want to send anybody, you will have tendency of just sending this one. Because we are human. Now, we are created in the image of God. Don't forget. We are created in the image of God. So there are some behaviors we have and we are, they are like God. They are like God. You know, the same way if you have three children, there is one you know that is very stubborn. 
But there's another one that you know once you say something, it doesn't matter what it will cost them, they will do it. So as a parent, you'll also find it easy to send this one that always obeys your voice than sending this one that will never obey. Because you also don't want to have time to waste talking to this one that you know is to not be happening. So if then, if then we carry the image of God, then I believe strongly that God also has no time wasting talking to people that he knows will not obey. God is telling you, leave brother so-and-so, go and marry brother so-and-so. And you stick to brother so-and-so. Oh, you know, I've invested a lot of time. You know, I love brother. You know, I've taken my time. You know, I've loved him. You know, I've given him my money. I've given him my time. God is saying, I knew before I told you. When, I, when you asked me to talk, I knew already that brother A, you have invested your time. You have invested your emotions. You have invested your money. But I know he's not the destined for you. So me as God that you asked my opinion, brother B is the one that you should go with, or sister B. So God is telling you his mind, but you are sticking to the first thing. So God also doesn't want people who are stuck. You must, and number, the next number is, when you are seeking to hear the voice of God, go when you are flexible. You can allow the voice to twist you. Don't be hard-headed. I'm going here. So God, if you have to talk, make sure you talk towards this direction. Anything like this or like this, I will not obey. Number next thing is learn to be flexible to the voice of God. When God say A, I go A. When God say B, I go B. And that's why I pray, may God open your ears. Tonight may it be the beginning of that day that you'll begin to hear directions, 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 directions in the name of Jesus. I don't know what I'm praying for. Because I said the reason why many of us are regretting today is failure to hear the voice of God. Fasting and praying does not make you to hear the voice of God. And this one we have messed here. I'm going to pray and fast. I want to hear the voice of God. I'm going to pray and fast. I'm going to seek for direction. I'm going to pray and fast. It's not about your fasting that will make you to hear the voice of God. Listen to me and listen good. What will make you to hear the voice of God is what I'm teaching here. What I called positioning yourself correctly. There is how you position yourself, you will never hear the voice of God. And there is how you position yourself spiritually, you begin to hear the voice of God. And I will teach you on Monday, how do I position myself to hear the voice of God? From Monday, I'll be teaching you, how then, man of God, can I, what do you call positioning yourself to hear the voice of God? There is how you position yourself to receive from God. There is how you position yourself to hear from God. Remember, Eli is sleeping in the same house where God is calling Samuel, but Eli does not hear the voice. It is Samuel who is coming to tell him, I'm hearing a voice. The same Samuel is, is hearing a voice, but his, his master, Eli, doesn't hear a voice. Same house, under the same roof, the same God talking to Samuel, but Eli who even knows how God speaks, is failing to hear. Meaning, at that time, what the Bible says in verse 1, verse 2, verse 3, he was not properly positioned to hear the voice. But Samuel had been positioned correctly, which I will teach on Monday. So praying and fasting doesn't make you hear the voice. And many of us, we have blamed fasting. I went to fasting, man of God, I prayed. I did not hear the voice of God. It doesn't happen that way. Praying and fasting build your spirit, man makes you more sensitive in the spirit praying and fasting build your sensitivity in the spirit praying and fasting build your spiritual man it makes your spiritual man strong praying and fasting makes you more sensitive in the spirit oh god bless you reverend i'm seeing you there god bless you praying and fasting doesn't open your spiritual eyes to hear to see doesn't open your your, your spiritual ears to hear it just make you spiritually strong in the realms of the spirit, your spirit man, and also it raises your sensitivity, which can also enhance you to hear. Which also can enhance you to hear. But what will pass? I can be prophesying now, and I can prophesy 35 people that are watching without knowing where you are coming from, without seeing your picture, without seeing your name, without knowing your history. How do I succeed to do that? Because I've, I know how to position myself to hear. I have, I have mastered that dimension. So, because there is the grace I have mastered. And that's why I tell people every day that whoever is ahead of you knows what you don't know. If you like, you can argue the whole week. If you like, you can talk. 
if you like, you can do what you like. But whoever is ahead of you in something knows what you don't know. If you have big children than my children, you know how to battle with children in that age. I don't know. I may argue with it, but that remains the truth. Am I communicating? So fasting in prayer doesn't make you hear the voice of God. Positioning yourself correctly is what will make you hear the voice, which I will not teach now because of time. I will teach that on, on Monday because I'm doing this series today until Wednesday. And I pray you don't even miss one. I pray you don't even miss one. And share it so that somebody somewhere can be blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus. Moses was very angry with the children of Israel. And we know this story. We know this story very well. Moses was very angry. You know why Moses was angry? <clears throat> when he went to seek the face of the Lord on the mountain, he took his time hearing God's voice is not a joke. And that's why sometimes people will say, Man of God, prophesy. Man of God, tell me something. What is the Lord saying about my situation? Man of God, speak a word. We are not motivated to prophesy because we know you are not obedient to do what the Lord is going to say. Because... Moses was angry because he would spend his day and suffer to hear the voice of God. And after suffering to hear the voice of God, they will still doubt Moses. They will tell Moses, okay, go and tell that God that since now he has decided to talk to you, go and tell him even as we have ears, we can hear. Let him talk to us. What kind of nonsense are you going to tell us every day the Lord is saying, every day the Lord is saying? What kind of nonsense? Go and tell that God to talk to us as well. We are, we are not happy. So Moses is angry. I am suffering myself to hear the voice. I come to tell you what the Lord is saying. You are doubting me. You are going to do your own things. So Moses was angry because of that. But I pray that you will not act as like those children of Israel who they will hear the voice of God and do the contrary in the name of Jesus. I'm praying for all of us that in the name of the Lord Jesus, we are not going to disobey. We are not going to act contrary in the name of Jesus Christ. And I want to submit to you, child of God, many of us are victims of hearing the voice of God. Can I submit to you? If our parents had God well, some of us could not be where we are. If our parents had God well, some of us, we couldn't be where we are. I want to tell you something. <laughs> Do you know some people in the realms of the spirit you are supposed to have only one child? Now let me tell you the truth. Some of us in the realm of the spirit you are supposed to only have one child. But you are, you are having seven. You are having nine. You are having ten. You are having four. Are you aware that some of us in the realm of the spirit <clears throat> you are not supposed to be living in the city you are living in? You're not know, supposed to be working in the company you are working in. You're not supposed to be married to the woman or the man you are married to. But we are victims of failing to hear the voice of the Lord. And I want to submit to you again. Most of us, is if our parents would hear God correctly, we wouldn't be where we are. Because our parents would have directed us correctly. If, if, you're supposed, if, you'd, if you'd give birth to one child because the Lord wanted you to have one, only one, do you know God will provide for that one and you will not struggle with one? If God wants you to have seven, you will never struggle with the seven. But if God wanted you to have, say, two, and you have four, these other two can affect these other two. Because what is provided for is for the two that God originally wanted you to have. But you added your own two. So you will be the one now using the same money. Maybe there are six children. So the first three were in the will of God. The second three are between you and your husband. So what God is saying, since you have decided to be wiser than me, now what's going to happen? Me, I'll provide for the three I commanded. You, you will provide for your own three. So what God will bring is for only three children. Then you as a mother or as a father, you will split it to six children. And then now you live a life of struggle, not because God is not on your side. God is fully on your side. But you, re, you, you are the one who re, restructured your life because of failing to hear the voice of God. <clears throat> oh, I know somebody's not happy now. No, you don't. You, many of us now are not happy because you thought I would not come that direction. 
If God wants you to have two children and you got three, the third one, spiritually, you may never, you may never know among these three who, who is the one. Is it the first, the second, or the third? Or, or you know, you realize there is this, the, it, you are just okay until this thing happened. And from that thing that it happened, now everything has never been okay. May you not fail to hear the voice of God in every step you are going to make in life in the name of Jesus. Oh, I'm praying for everybody here. May you never fail to hear the voice of God from today in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you know there are some people, you are in a first marriage, and when that marriage did not work, God was in his plan that you stay like five years before you marry again. Or you stay for three years before marrying again. But after that too, before that time, God wanted you to stay. You, you married before God's time. You left the marriage. God wanted you for five years to stay and maybe learn a lesson. Maybe you did not learn some lesson. So God wanted you to learn a lesson. And because you are too impatient, you left this marriage. You did not wait for five years. You married two months or three months. You have married again. You know the challenge is you are, you are not to be to be you know to be faulted. You are not supposed to be saying okay, I'm wrong. The problem is you did not know how to hear the voice of God, so you never followed the will of God. And once you do not hear the voice of God and you do not hear follow the will of God, you automatically will make a mistake. <clears throat> Maybe your wife died, and God wanted you to stay for three years. There's a lesson God wanted you to learn. And you, you did not wait for three years. You married within six months. So you see how expensive failing to hear can be. So you put yourself in what is yours. And can I submit to you? Let me submit to you. A project God did not start, God will not fund. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. A Agoja <laughs> I don't know if I'm talking too much here, but I pray someone will hear me. Hear me, child of God. Something that you will start within yourself, within your knowledge and your ability, you will find it with your own effort. A project God does not start, God will not find. God will never stand with what he never started. A marriage you start because of lust, because of misunderstanding, because of failing to hear the voice of God, you will struggle to keep it with your wisdom. Children you give birth to that were never directed. You need to hear God. Should I have one? Should I have two? Should I have three? I said anybody that will ever join my prophetic hour will never regret one day. Whether during prophecy, whether during prayer, whether during teaching. And that's why I'm praying for everybody under the sound of my voice. May your spiritual ears be open and may you have the ability to begin to hear what the Lord is saying. If you start something that God is not inside, God will not fund it. You may go to a big prophet to pray for you. You can travel to South Africa. You can travel to Nigeria. If you like, go to the U.S. God will still bring you back to Nairobi so that you can learn a lesson. And that's why I say this life is full of lessons. Be careful that you learn every step of your life. Many of us today, I said, are crying because we couldn't hear the voice of God concerning a particular issue. We are crying today because we were not able to hear the voice of God concerning a particular issue. Moses said, we will not go from here if the Lord is not going to guarantee that he's going to go with us. Now, listen to that part. He said, we are, <laughs> Israelites said, we will not live here. Father, if you are not going to go with us, we are not living here. Tell us that you are giving us a surety that you are going to go with us. If you are not going to go with us, we are not living here. And I'm praying for a generation that will say, I will not rush into marriage if the Lord is not going to confirm for me some issues. I'm not going to, to start a project if the Lord is not going to. But, but you know, many of you, you will even marry somebody, stay with them for six months before even your pastor is aware. Leave alone God. You will start a business and... Your pastor will be asking you, ah, my daughter, these days you are not, uh, I say, Papa, I got a job these days, I'm even working on Sunday. Even your pastor is surprised. He was not aware. <laughs> you need, if it comes to marriage, you need to hear God about your marriage. And when you're hearing God about your marriage, God, how many children do you want us to have? If God said four, bring four. If God said three, bring three. If God says seven, bring seven. But if God said four, you give birth to seven, 
God will take care of four. You will take care of seven. Go ahead and tell, quote me on this. And the beauty with God is this. God will never quarrel you when you are messing. He said four, you are adding the fifth, the sixth, the seventh is just quiet. He's waiting for you when bills will start being, being on your neck. That's when you will know it's God. You will cry blood out of your eyes. You will be waiting and you will not move. And the beauty is, if you like, go and, go and backslide. If you like, stop worshipping God. If you like, join Islam. Say, I don't love this Christianity again. It will not change. It remains God. As far as you choose to follow your direction, God will remain God. So the earlier you learn how to hear and obey, the better. And I tell you today, you may not like what I'm saying, but as far as I'm concerned, is the revelation in the, I'm saying I'm preaching from a revelation and from experience, experiential knowledge. You know, because of lack of this knowledge I'm teaching in this prophetic hour, we think that everything that is good is of God. And I want to submit to you that not everything that looks good is of God. Not all that glitters is gold. Not every handsome man can make a husband. Not every beautiful woman can make a wife. It's not in the shape of the body of a woman. It's not in the six pack that a man is having. It is in what is the will of God for my destiny. It is in what is... It's not in the pocket of the man. It's not in the type of a car he drives. It's not in the estate he lives. It's not in the standard. It's not in the eloquence. It's not in how he can present himself. I will submit to you that our former president, the second president, Moi, was the one of the most powerful and most richest and the most, you can mention, president we ever had in this country and in Africa as a, at large. But with all the power Moi had, <clears throat> with all the money he had, all the influence he had, and I'm saying this with all the due respect to his family, he couldn't keep a wife until he died. I'm saying this with all due respect to his family. With all that he had in terms of power, influence, money, keeping a wife, they stayed separate with his wife for years. So what you think is giving marriage is not, it's not about your husband having money, it's not a woman working. It's not about beauty. It's not about body size. It's not about those things people look at. It is, there is just a grace of God. There is just a grace of God. And I'm praying somebody receive this grace tonight. I don't know who I'm praying for, but I pray that somebody will just receive this special grace. There's just a special grace God will just give you. Hmm. It's, not in, it's not in what people look for. And that's why you will see your, your cousin or your sister or your friend staying with one husband that is drunk and keep beating her. You are saying, me, if I would live with that man, I would have left him long ago. You are sure and you are true. You are not lying. Because the grace that woman is having you, you don't have it. You see, you see one man, the wife is just one year, year woman who doesn't know how left from right. And you are saying this man is suffering in this marriage. If it was me, I can only live with a stupid woman like this one. And by, let me tell you for sure, you're, you're saying the truth. You don't have grace to stay with such useless women. But God will give you particular grace. So that that stupid one, you can manage with that stupidity. That's what now we say, they say, it's a special grace. They, I don't know how to call it. <clears throat> you find somebody, they're fighting with their husband, they're fighting with their wife. You, you are saying me, fight with the man or fight with the woman. Oh, my dead body cannot happen. And you are, you are sure, you are true, you are not lying. It's because that particular line of grace, you don't have it. But God has given it to the other one. So what God will do, when God gives you a wife or a, or a husband, he gives you one dimension of grace to sustain that person. And let me say this without forgetting. When you are trying to hear the voice of God about something, and you are hearing multiple voices. Maybe you want to be married. And you are asking God, should I marry Alice? Or is it Jane? Or is it Lillian? And you are hearing multiple voices. Today you are hearing it is Alice. Tomorrow you are hearing it is Lillian. 
The next tomorrow you are hearing it is grace. When you hear those multiple voices keep confusing you, the devil has attacked you and has attacked that, that particular area, that particular line you are asking direction for. Stop asking. Don't keep pushing. Mm -mm. This is the wisdom. God, is it Christian? Is it holiness? Is it Jackie? Is it Mpendo? And, and today you are hearing it is Lizzie. Tomorrow it is Christian. Tomorrow it is holiness. You, 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 you get confusion. Either marriage, relationship, business, anything that has to do with your life, when you begin to hear confusion, different, different voices, today it was this, tomorrow you are hearing this, then so, pause. Stop pursuing that direction. Pause. Stop pursuing that direction. Give it a month or two or three and later come back. Because the devil has attacked that pursuit. Am I giving somebody wisdom? <clears throat> because the, how we will go about it is, when you hear about something too much, too much, you begin to say, no, maybe, because I've been hearing Ophelia, 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 Ophelia. It's like it is Ophelia. But these other ones I'm not hearing well. Maybe Eunice, Nyongesa, oh, Beth. These ones I'm hearing small, small. Maybe they are not the ones. This one I'm hearing more. As, as far as there is a mix-up, there is confusion, it means there is already attack. God, can I work for G4S or I work for Securico? And you're hearing G4S Securico. G4S Securico. G4S. There is already attack. Stop. Give yourself time. And then come back and pursue later. I, I'm giving somebody wisdom here. Because what, what the problem we have, you will push, even when you can tell there is confusion, you keep pushing. And then now before you know, you are confused. And then you say, man of God, before I married this woman, if I married this man, I had a voice. It is true, my daughter. You had a voice, but you are confused. Either because of ignorance, you moved on and made decisions, or because of lack of knowledge, or because of lust of the flesh, or because of ignorance. But I pray today, even as I'm ending this first session of this teaching, that may God open your ears and your eyes. This prophetic hour we are doing every Monday to Wednesday, I want to make it a learning session. Get ready to learn. I'm putting my heart to teach my heart out that somebody will not remain where they were before they met this man. The one day you say I met Prophet Robert and God has used this man to change my spiritual life around. And by the grace of God, I'm praying to see you in your next level. I'm praying to see you in your testimony dimension. I'm praying to see you carrying the grace of God testifying. And if you can learn, your life will never remain the same. So tomorrow is Thursday. We are not coming live. So we are becoming, I'll be live during the service on Friday. So make sure that you come physically. We are in Siokimau, behind 67 Airport Hotel. It's not far. There is no place that is far, as far as God is concerned. Make sure that you are there on Friday from 5 p.m. to 6.30. By 7 sharp, we should be out. And I'm praying with you in the name of the Lord Jesus that you're going to make it till that day and you are coming expectant of the Lord and God will speak to you. This is what I believe in. I believe in women and men that when they hear a blessing from a man of God, they make it their responsibility. You're saying, man of God, you've been a blessing to me. When you teach, you talk to me. And I feel upon this altar, there is a blessing for me. <clears throat> and I told you yesterday, and I will tell you today again, when you feel upon an altar like this one, there is a blessing connected to your life. Don't wait until a man of God tells you to sow a seed, do this, do that. Just make it a tradition. That once a service like this is ended, you get a prophet offering and you release it to the man of God. And God will bless you. So anybody that is sending a giving, I pray for you in the name of Jesus. That may God bless you, may God prosper you, and may God do you good. Even those who are sending money, may you never lack what you are sending. If it is a tithe, if it is an offering, if it is a sacrifice, if it is a prophet offering. It may be much, it may be little. But I pray in the name of Jesus. That may God multiply that which you are going to give. You are giving 300 shillings. May it be multiplied. You are giving 1,000. Let it be multiplied. You are giving 10,000. Let it be multiplied. You are giving 100,000. Whatever the dimension of giving you are doing. Whether tithe, profit, offering. Let there be multiplication. I declare that wherever their hands shall connect with this altar. May you never lack. May those hands always touch blessings. In the name of Jesus. If what I am teaching is blessing you. Sharing is caring. Share it on your wall. Let people who know you bless, be blessed by the same. Share it in a group of Facebook where you belong. Share it with a friend 
who you really feel for so that they don't make mistakes like you have made before. Because many of us are victims of not hearing the voice of God. And I pray after today that you will have an open eye and open ear that you begin to hear God directly. I declare you blessed. See you on Friday. See you on Sunday. But this series will continue with part two, part three, and part four from Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday next week. God bless you. Those who are in Mombasa, I'll be in Mombasa on, when, on Saturday. I'm landing in the morning by 7, I think it's by 7, no, by 8, 8.15. I'll be in Mombasa by 8.15, and I'm leaving Mombasa by 9 p.m. in the evening. 8.15 in the morning, and I'm leaving 9 p.m. in the evening. So, if you want to see the man of God one-on-one -on -one in the box me, if you're within the Mombasa in the environment, Papa, I'm in Mombasa, and I want you've been a blessing, and I want to, you to pray with me. I'll be glad to stand with you and see the manifestation of what God said he will do in your life. You have not followed this page before. I want to welcome you to like our page and follow our page. You can tell your friends also who you care for them. There is this man of God that God is raising so greatly and is teaching and blessing us. Please be connecting. Don't fear. You can, even, you can even invite the president if he's your friend. There's nobody who doesn't need what I'm teaching. You have a governor as your friend. You have a, a minister, a PS, a CAS, whatever you call it, a senator. Wherever how big, young, old, tell them there is nobody who's too big for the revelation of the Holy Spirit. Some people are stuck, but they're very big. The people we fear, some of them, they're looking for such messages. Maybe you fear telling them, but you telling them, sending them this one is doing them a lot of blessing. So share it to a friend, share it to a brother, to a sister, to a workmate, to a colleague, and tell them that God loves them and that they listen to Prophet Robert. God bless you. See you on Friday in the prophetic service and on Sunday. God bless you. God prosper you. Shalom. The Lord is our peace. God bless your giving as well in Jesus' name.